everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Charlie, thanks for joining me today. And today I want to talk about one of my favourite authors of all time, Trudy Canavan. Now Trudy got me into fantasy fiction basically. Um, as a kid I read all of the kind of really common stuff. I read you know, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, um, Narnia, all those things, I was really into it. And then I kind of wasn't really reading fantasy, I would say in between the ages of maybe 13 and 15. Apart from Harry Potter, which I was reading as it came out, I just kind of lost interest and I was reading other things. I was really into kind of contemporary fiction at the time and when I was that age there wasn't really a, a really kind of YA section. There were children's books and adult books and not a lot in between. So I hadn't really read much fantasy in those few years until a friend gave me a Trudy Canavan book when I was about 15 years old. And he gave me the first book in the Age of the Five trilogy, which was called The Priestess of the White. And it's one of my favourites and it's absolutely changed my perspective. The Priestess of the White is, like I say, book one in the Age of the Five trilogy. And it pretty much sucked me in completely. It made me realise that fantasy is an awesome genre. I should read more of it. And I absolutely have. In the last 15 years, I've read so much fantasy and it's all thanks to this book. So this series features two warring countries, the Circulians and the Pentadrians. And in this world, the gods are real and they like to meddle in their followers' lives. Now, the Circulian gods are very involved and they like to give their followers kind of dictation. They like to tell their followers exactly what to do, how to live, how to proceed. The Pentadrians have a sort of non-involvement policy. They're hands off. They don't like to unduly influence their followers. And it's really interesting. Obviously, both um, nations think that their gods are the true gods and the others are either imaginary or false gods that should be destroyed. So there's lots of tension. In this series, there is lots of obviously magic, war, politics, magical creatures. It ticks all the boxes. It's really cool. And the characters are fantastic. It is multiple point of view. You do follow a priestess as she joins the Circulian priesthood. You follow Mirar, I didn't want to say his name because it was a spoiler, but I guess it's not, who is a leader of a legendary cult in this world. You follow some immortals and their lives, and you follow some of the other um, Pelagrian characters later on in the series as well. You do also get perspectives of some of the magical creatures, which is very interesting. I don't want to say too much because it really is an exciting tale. It's amazing. I don't want to spoil too much. But read The Age of Five, it's absolutely fantastic. I can't recommend it enough. If you're going to pick up one epic fantasy series this year, this is absolutely the one to start with. The next thing that I read by Trudy Canavan was the Black Magician trilogy, which starts off with the Magician's Guild. Now, technically, I think this is considered YA. Like I say, when I read it 15 years ago, YA wasn't really that defined as a genre. It, at least it wasn't marketed that way in bookstores. But I have since heard people say that it is YA and I think that's because the one of the main characters starts off as a teenager. It's not that young, it's still very adult, there's lots of adult themes, but if you are someone who is into YA fantasy you may like this. This is a series that features a magic school, one of my favourite tropes. There is a girl that has no idea she has magical abilities, she accidentally uncovers them when she attacks one of the magicians they're doing a purge in her city. Once a year, the magicians purge the slums, they kick everyone out, everyone who kind of can't afford to stay there. And Sunea, our main character, fights back. She realises she has magic and she then goes on the run. She is fleeing for her life from these magicians because the magicians in this world don't have a great reputation outside of the upper class. They don't really help the poor, they don't really get involved. They're a bit elitist, a bit snobby, and they look after themselves. And she becomes involved in this world. You then get the perspective of some of the magicians in the world as well and you get into contact with the black magician Akarin. Akarin is the big bad, he's dark and scary and he's one of my favourite characters. <laughs> he does remind me a lot of the Darkling from the Grisha trilogy, um, although technically I read this first so the Darkling reminds me of Akarin. But he is great, he's very multidimensional, he's a morally great character, I like him a lot. And if you are someone who enjoys a little bit of romance with their fantasy, this series has it too. And it does have the enemies to lovers trope. 
it's one of the first books that I've ever read that did that. It does it very well. This is almost as good as Age of the Five. It's a really, really, really close second for me. They're both absolutely beloved. I love them so much. I've reread them so many times over the years. I know I will continue to reread them over the years. But I think Age of the Five is just a little bit better for me in terms of the epic scope of it and how it makes me feel. But this is a very, very close second and I would thoroughly recommend it. We've then got The Magician's Apprentice. This is a prequel book to the Black Magician trilogy. This came out um, many years later, but it is set about 100 years beforehand. Now, even though it's a prequel, I would say you should probably read the original trilogy first. It gives you a lot of context and you will get more out of the book. And this follows um, some magicians in the Magician's Guild back when they practiced a different kind of magic. I don't want to say too much because it will spoil if you haven't read the original series, but you learn all about how the magic worked then and you get to make connections between what they did and how it's evolved and how it became to be what it is in the main trilogy. There is war, there's conflict, it's a really good time. It's not as great as the original trilogy in my opinion, but it's still a solid read and it's a really good addition to the series as well if you're already a fan. Okay, next up we have the Traitor Spy trilogy. This is a sequel trilogy to the Black Magician trilogy. This follows the son of one of the main characters in that series. They decide they want to leave Carilla, which is the uh, country where it's based, and they want to explore the world, to become an ambassador, and so on. It's really good fun. Again, there's lots of conflict, there's war, there's politics, and magic, and it's great. It's not as good as the original trilogy in my opinion, it didn't quite live up, but it's still great. It's a little solid kind of 4.75 read for me. I really enjoyed it. I would say there's a few things that don't allow it to get to five stars, mainly the characterization. The characters are good, they're not beloved. I really love the characters in the original trilogy. They're very close to my heart. It's possibly that, that a lot of that is due to nostalgic reasons. These characters didn't run their way in quite so tight, but I do really like them and I would say this is still quite a solid series to read. The final series that I want to talk about today from Trudy Canavan is Millennium's Rule. Now this is my secret shame. I started this a few years ago and I never finished it. I've actually got a bookmark in here still which tells me that I got to page 193. Now I was reading it and I was really enjoying it, um, but I am a mood reader. Uh, if I'm not into something, I will try something else. And also I am part of a buddy read group, I'm actually part of a few. And at the time when I was reading this, I was reading five other books and they were great. This was two, but I kept reading those. I kept continuing. I kept going on throughout the month of my buddy read schedule. And before I knew it, there'd been about three weeks past when I hadn't read a page of this. And so it wasn't fresh in my mind. I also intended to finish it. And I never did. I put it back on the shelf and it sat there for a few years. Now I am going to read this again at some point from the very beginning. I'm going to read the whole trilogy. Um, I love Trudy Canavan. I have no doubt I will love this. But unfortunately, I'm a bad reader, so I can't give opinions on this because I let myself down. So I can't remember too much about it. So I'm actually going to just read you guys the blurb. That will probably explain it better than I could because my memories are very vague and foggy. It says, in a world where magic powers an industrial revolution, Tian, a student of archaeology, unearths a sentient book called Vela. Once a sorcerer bookbinder, Vela was transformed by one of the greatest sorcerers in history. Since then, she has been collecting information, including a clue to the disaster Tian's world faces. Pretty cool so far. And then it says, elsewhere, in a land ruled by priests, Riel has been taught that to use magic is to steal from the angels. Yet she knows she has a talent for it, and that corrupter is willing to teach her. Should she dare to risk the angel's wrath? Okay, that bit I remember. I do remember um, about a young girl she's really powerful and she lived in a very kind of religiously oppressive society that big rings big bells i do kind of have a memory of priests walking down the street patrolling that kind of thing so that's great i don't remember the first bit about tian but it does sound very cool and then there is a little summary at the bottom as well which says not everything is as tian and riel have been raised to believe not the nature of magic and not even the people they trust so i'm assuming that these characters come together and form some sort of team I don't remember, I have no idea, but that's what it sounds like. I will give Millennium's Rule another try. I would encourage you guys to do so as well. However, I would say, if you're gonna pick up any Trudy Canavan book, 
pick up the Priestess of the White, read the Age of the Five trilogy. It's absolutely amazing. It will blow your mind. And maybe my kind of memories are tinted by, you know, rose coloured glasses. Maybe it's nostalgia. But there's something about that series that has stuck with me for 15 years. And I read a lot of fantasy. I read a lot of books on a regular basis. I think last year I read maybe 160, 170 books. It's quite a lot. And I read a lot of the big fantasy authors as well. I do read a lot of things from Brandon Sanderson, um, authors like Mark Lawrence, for example, Jay Kristoff, etc. There's so many to talk about. The point is, Trudy Canavan is an author that I always go back to. She's one of my favourites, and I think that's for a reason. She just writes really great stories, so I would 100% recommend her. Thank you so much for joining me today and watching this video. Please leave a comment. Let me know if you've read any Trudy Canavan books and what your favourite is, or if you're going to try Trudy Canavan. And let me know if there's any fantasy books that you think I would like, based on the fact that I love Trudy so much. Please like this video and give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. Bye, guys. Thank you.